like I'm not gonna panic. I'm not gonna hit the panic button on that. But I did think it was like a little like it was something to see with her, you know, you know, obviously getting last and stuff like that. But I wouldn't make a story out of it. If she's the Olympic champ. Like she's gonna be ready when it's time. You know, I, I don't think she's gonna be Shakari this year, but she'll be ready. Listen, I don't know if everybody feels this way, but I'm gonna keep it all the way 100 with you right now. Okay, this is for real. That meat, prelim meat or the quarterfinal meat with, you know, regional meat, whatever you want to call it, that's the easiest meat of the entire year. World News Podcast. My name's Colin Waitsman. I'm here with our esteemed co-host, Mr. Noah Williams. Noah, how you doing today, man? What's going on, man? Blessing, highly favored, brother. How you feeling? Doing good, doing good. I am uh, still trying to recover from this dang Eugene trip, bro. It's you don't realize how much like traveling, like I got, I give a lot of respect to y'all. I, I just did one like little weekend and I'm like knocked out. I don't know how y'all be traveling like back to back to back to back. Like that, that, that stuff's crazy, man. It's, it's nuts. Yeah. It adds up, man. I like traveling though. So it's fun. You know what I'm saying? It's fun. You got to embrace it, but it'll definitely put a little toll on you. Get, you get a little sick, you know, all that. Yeah. So Getting getting back from Eugene, but great uh great weekend. Have a lot of stuff to go over a little bit with uh with some track and field news. So what we're going to be covering today? Excuse me. First, Shakari Richardson, huge win over uh the field in her opener with the one hundred at the Prefontaine Classic. Elaine Thompson Arah not looking great. What does it mean for the rest of her season? Christian Coleman once again got a big win in his one hundred meter dash. Season's best uh, with 995. Uh, we still haven't seen those crazy fast times drop yet. Will we ever see it this year? What's it going to look like the rest of this season? Uh, the beef of all beef. We got Josh Kerr, Jakob Ingerbritsen going head to head against one another. Uh, Josh coming out with the victory. Uh, we just got to get into a little bit of the some some of our favorite track and field beef. Why not talk about a little bit of that? Uh, and then we have Grant Holloway, another world leading time with him with the 1303 uh the what is the pace that we can see can we see a world record from him and then we'll get into a little bit of the college scene we had prelims that just happened next week's show will be our college preview for the NCAA championship but we'll go over just some of the performances we saw this past weekend and what we're looking forward to there so all lot of things that we're going to be going into let's start over with Shakari Richardson, the Prefontaine Classic. So we had a big win uh, for Shakari. She ran, what was it, a time of 10.83 to win the women's 100. Julian Alfred second with a 10.93. Dina Asher-Smith third with a 10.98. Elaine thompson Hurrah coming in last with a time of 11.3. Uh, what, what do you think this race told us? We saw some first races from a lot of people. What were your thoughts from uh, from this competition here? Um, I think this race told me a lot. I, I, I took a lot from this race, but first and foremost, Shakari is ahead of everybody else, like everybody else in the in the entire field. Um, obviously, she had Elaine there. She had uh, Talu there. She had Julian there to kind of gauge herself. It was her 100-meter opener. Um, so she got with some ladies that have been running, some ladies that haven't. And, um, you know, she was able to win convincingly uh, as an opener. You know, so I think she's the commentator said it well. She's primed and she's showing she's ready for the Olympic trials. And, you know, like she came, executed, knocked it out the park. Yeah, it was a uh, it was a big I think a big kind of like statement win of last time. I mean, I know it was what, I think two prefontaines ago where it's almost the it's pretty much the exact opposite when uh you know Shakari was coming off of or 3 years ago when Shakari was coming off of uh you know her suspension uh and then she was coming back and we saw Elaine drop that crazy time at pre and it was like all hyped up, you know, the we're seeing the Jamaicans going up against each other and then we had Shakari who who was, you know, coming up at the end and just has a complete redemption arc flip that to that thing totally around of now she's you know coming out here with a with a big win you could I, I wasn't watching the broadcast but it looked like after her race she was like he's like yo like I'm like I'm I'm that girl like I'm I'm one of them ones like she was she was she was hyped up you know to, to get that win so I think it's it's big for you know for her to to get that you know against 
what this very well could be most of the people that are going to be in that 100 meter finals field. Yeah, absolutely. She held good composure, you know, and it looked like an opener. Like that was her fir her first time touching a hundred. So it's going to be, it's going to be a good one for her. And I, I actually saw this graphic on Twitter this morning um, about Elaine. Cause I, at first I didn't really know how to feel about it. And then I saw this to put it in perspective. I think she ran 1130, right? Yeah. So in 2021, when she won the Olympics, her first meet, was 11 21 so she's and she just opened 11 30 so like i'm not gonna panic i'm not gonna hit the panic button on that but i did think it was like a little like it was something to see with her you know you know obviously getting last and stuff like that but i wouldn't make a story out of it if she's the olympic champ like she's gonna be ready when it's time you know i, I don't think she's gonna be shakari this year but she'll be ready yeah. me. so i hear that i hear that this is my this is a little bit of my concern. I guess we'll take it to just the broader, just the broader Jamaican track and field right now. This is where this is my thought. So we saw Sh Sharika Jackson last week open up, came out flat. She won, given you know, but didn't look great in, mm -hmm. in her 200 meter victory. We've now got Elaine Thompson Hurrah, who comes out, doesn't look great. 11.30 comes in last in both of their openers. And then we haven't seen Shelly Ann Frazier Price at all this season. Have no idea like where she's at. Is that like, it's a little concerning to me where we have the three biggest names in, in track that either A, haven't started or B, if they have started, haven't looked great or like in their, like in their self of like, yeah, I get it. She ran 11.21 to open up. Uh, you know, when she won the Olympics, but like you, you coming in dead last in this race, it's a little bit like, Oh man, like we only have, I mean, granted, they don't have to really be turning things up. Uh, Cause you know, the way that their, their trials runs, like they'll be fine. But like, I don't know. I'm a little bit concerned. Why, why aren't you that concerned about it? <laughs> I think that they have all seen the highest peak. They have the composure and the experience that these other women don't. And I think a lot of times when you get into those crucial moments, like that plays a factor in somebody stepping up or not stepping up. Now, I don't know too much and I don't want to weigh too much on like the age thing because Sharika's only like 26 or 27. She might be 28. But um Sharika's not, you know, older. But I know that, you know, Shelly Ann and Elaine, they're both on the other side of 30. Um, we've seen people sprint into, you know, their early to mid thirties, but there's outliers and maybe, you know, this is a way of age presenting itself. It might be taking them a little bit longer to get into their rhythm, or it might be taking them a bit longer to feel like they're at the point that they're ready to compete or ready to open up. Um, contractually, they might have to be doing these things, even though they know they're not ready to compete, you know? So there's a lot of different factors, but since they do have that veteran experience. I'm not going to push the panic button on them just yet. You know, there's factors that's going on and stuff that like raise an eyebrow. Um, but I'm not, you know, like they're, they've shown me too much over the span of recent history. Mm -hmm. Does the fan, does the fact that it's in Olympic year at all, like, like let's say this was last year and mm -hmm. we saw, you know, going into world championships, we see her, you know, come opening up in 1130, like, would have that changed your perspective? Would have you been, okay, I'm hitting the panic button a little bit more, or is it not changed that much based on, you know, being an Olympic year? This year? It, would, it wouldn't change too much. Like, I feel they, like, it's certain people you could kind of put more confidence in than others. And uh, when it comes to Elaine, Sharika, and, and Shelly Ann, like, they've, like I, I said, it, like, they've shown me too much in big moments for me to panic about something like this. Like, it's something to take note of, but like I said, I can never. I'm gonna never panic on them until they really show me, like, okay, yeah, it's it's not looking good. Yeah. If I'm uh, it's it's all it's interesting too. So I was back on on track Twitter and uh, taking a look at you know Jamaica. My, my favorite my favorite Twitter is going to to Jamaican track Twitter and seeing what they all got to say, and it's very similar you know thing so i don't know if you got a little jamaican blood in you there noah you, you saying a lot of the same <laughs> stuff there man <laughs> no, so, so that yeah they're like nah like yo it's her opener she'll be all right she'll be all right 
I don't know. Like I, I think of it also from the competitor side of things of like, not only was it an 1130, but like you're losing to eight other people. Like that's a, as, as a competitor, that's a big one. We'll get into the, the, the Josh Kerr and the, the Jakob Ingebrigtsen thing uh, too, which I think there's a, you know, a little talking about competition, but I think the fact that, you know, you're, you're, you're coming in after all these, all these other women. Like if I'm Shakari, Julian Alfred, Dean Asher Smith, Daryl Nita, if I'm all these people, like I'm feeling great of, I just like destroyed the, the, the former Olympic champion in her own race. Like I'd be feeling pretty good about it. I don't know how good you'd be feeling about it. You know, after, after something like this, you know, I would be feeling good. I would be feeling very good, but I'm also gonna keep in mind. But yo, that's still that's still Elaine. You, that's still Elaine. I, she probably had an off day. Something like you know, yeah, I beat her today. I got it. You know what I'm saying? I'm yeah. She know I'm right here, but I still gotta keep in mind. Like okay, you know, she's still gonna be ready when it counts. Like so, maybe a little bit of a mental edge. Like okay, I know I can beat this person, but still having enough respect. Like okay. They, but they can still spin a block on me, so yeah, she won't get she won't get her get back eventually. She she won't be back there, so right. I, feel you, I feel you. Uh, and so outside of just uh, the Shakari, Julian Alfred, like I think I'm, I'm liking the way that she's running, she's been extremely consistent throughout this in just her entire career. I feel yeah. like going back into to them Texas days, like she's always up there. Like, how, how you feeling about her going into the, the championships here? I love Julian, bro. She's my dark horse. She's my dark horse champion. I mean, it's way too way too early for predictions or anything like that. But after her indoor season and her, you know, just missing out on the medal, like I seen uh, missing out on the medal last summer, um, I seen like you know this that like the extra like oomph indoors. You know what I'm saying? And I I seen the way she's running, what she's putting together, her strength even on a four by four. You know, um, you know, she's my dark horse. She's my she's not my number one pick, but she's my dark horse. So I'm definitely excited about Julian, man. She's showing some good stuff. Oh yeah. No, I I was watching um because like the the warm-ups when I was at the practice and everything. And um yeah, she got some power, man. She's strong. Like them them block starts were whoo, she, yeah. she was out there. So you so tell me a little bit about just your experience as a viewer and being immersed in that in that energy for pre. How was how was the meeting and everything like that? Yeah, man. Like it was awesome. Like, uh, first off, shout out magic boost, uh, for, for having me out there, you know, Ooh. we, those that don't know media program for aspiring track and field, uh, you know, media journalists, they'll, you have a lot of like bi-weekly sessions where they'll go over different things about the media, uh, as well as you'll go out to two meets. So they'll, they'll fly you out to the Milrose games as well as the Prefontaine classic. So completely paid for all these trips, just like an amazing experience with some amazing people. Like there were six other people that were like similar to me that were doing this. So awesome stuff there. So I start off, shout out them for allowing this to happen. Um, but yeah, like the overall experience was, was, was crazy. It was um first being in the, uh, the, the days before, like leading up to it, like we see the practice, I've been able to connect with some athletes. I didn't, for those that watched it, what was it, I guess, yesterday or two days ago at this point when this is coming out, uh, had the interview with uh, Kenny Bednarik, uh, which was awesome. So got to go in and meet him, do that uh, that face-to-face, which was a lot of fun. Uh, and then we also were, I was able to, you know, go out doing the, the practices and, and all that stuff. And, and you really see just like how powerful, like some of the, these athletes are, it, which was, which was an awesome experience. And then on top of that, like you're in track town USA during a track meet. And so people just like the knowledge of track while you're there is just significantly more. It's, it's refreshing to be around. Like I went to, went to like the Nike store and like talking to the, uh, the, the employees there, and they're all like, oh, yeah, what are your thoughts on, you know, the predictions in the in, in the prelims or sorry, not prelims, sorry, uh, pre-Fontaine Classic. Like, what do you think is going to happen here? What do you think is going to happen there? And it's like you go to a Nike store in Philadelphia and start talking about, hey, what do you think about the pre-Fontaine Classic? You're cooked. They don't know anything like that. And so it was like super refreshing to just be able to talk about track and field the way that 
Like, hey, the NBA finals were literally going – not finals, sorry. The NBA, like, Western Conference finals and Eastern Conference finals were literally going on at the same time. And I was talking to strangers about track and field before you're we talking about that, which is, like, no world would that happen. So um, that was, like, super, uh, super cool to see. And then, yeah, just the, the overall environment was was awesome. The media, the way they had the the, the media coverage was, was good. Like, it was all very well thought out. They did everything really well. So, yeah, overall, it was uh, an awesome time there. All right, man. Good job, Pre. For sure, for sure. Real quick, I'm getting a little feedback out of uh, – for sure. So, uh, great competition. If you ever have the opportunity to go out there, definitely recommend it. They had a sold-out crowd, over 12,000 people, you know, watching. So, uh, environment was bumping, and I could hear it from the mix zone. It, it, you could hear people just, like, going nuts uh, in, in the stadium. So, it was, uh, it was an awesome time. Uh, Cool. Let's go on over now to the men's 100 uh, for the Prefontaine Classic. Christian Coleman with another big win for him. He ran a time of 9.95, beating out Fernando Manala with a time of 9.98. And then uh, Brandon Picklin with a time of 10.08 to round out the top three. Uh, and uh, you have Akeem Blake uh, of Jamaica, who was in fourth place with a 10.12. Uh, you you were able to watch this race. I couldn't see it too much being in the in the media zone. What uh can you give us a breakdown of what you notice here from the that Coleman race? Great first sixty. Simple and plain. Great first sixty. Um, I think he got a little bit tense. I, I couldn't tell if it was more so him getting super tense or Omen Yala just you know running really well and running up on him. That last like 10 to 12 meters for him didn't look too good. I'm speaking Sanford Coleman didn't look too good. It just looked like he got tight, started reaching a little bit before the line. I don't know. I didn't like that though. Mm. I, I didn't like that because he was showing me like, you know, in previous races, I even spoke on it. Like, you know, this looks like he's putting something together to be able to finish these races how he needs to. And, you know, it was like a little bit of a regression. I mean, he won and he, that is his season's best, right? Yeah, season. Yeah, best. so he won in a in a season's best. So you know, I guess it is still a step forward. But hey, I mean, maybe thinking perspective here, it, it's still room for him to grow because if he still just clean that shit up, just clean that shit up a little bit, he'll be straight. Omen Yala, that was a great finish. He looked really, really good to finish that race. Um, so yeah, that was kind of my takeaway from Coleman. But I'm happy for the guy. You know, he did another perform well and, and got another dub. Yeah. I was trying to look up some of the the replays uh, on like YouTube and everything because like yeah once like for those that don't know when you're in like the media zone they have a TV uh, that's right there and it, there was one like right behind me but it's like people are just constantly coming in so it's like yo interview like got an interview then go interview then go and it's like that the track me just goes by super quickly but um yeah so it looks similar to what you're saying I think he got out he gets out well like that's what he's known for that's what he did and 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 he looked he looked great there. But then didn't have that quite that finish that that we're wanting to see, and it's um, I think it's uh, it's it's interesting how not it's it's everyone in the men's field that are really not running that fast. Like you would think that it would be everyone, like one person or two people. Like some people would be doing really great, but it's interesting that it's like everyone's running around this time. So it's like, yo, that's if that's where we're at then the performance that he's like this 995 at like running like right in those 990s like that can get the get you on this team like that that very well will get you where you where you need to be and um so it's like yeah was it where he he's probably hoping that he wants his his form to be and, and everything is like no i did a, an interview with him after the race and he's like yeah we gotta like go in and you know tweak on some things and you know it's, it's great to get a win and everything but like it's uh yeah i think it's 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 interesting to me that the the field across like the entire world is doing is all like in the same type of boat is that like interesting at all to you like how literally everyone is in the same kind of boat right now yeah the alignment seems to be a, a bit interesting i can try to give two reasons as to why i think that might be the case so one 
there's guys doing a lot of travel. Like there's a group of people that are doing a lot of traveling and like hitting a lot of meets, you know, like the China Diamond League meet and, and they've been around like doing multiple foreign meets. Um, and when you do that, like it's good, but you're not training as much. So you're like gaining some and losing some. And then on the other side, there's a bunch of athletes that are just training, 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 training loaded up, loaded up, loaded up and going to compete for rhythm. So it's like, it's definitely like, cause I think it's, you're right. There's no real outliers so far this season. There's no real like craziness that has gone on. I think maybe early, early season, like Tobobo might've started off some of the crazy stuff. Right. And then it kind of died down. But um, I guess that'll be my explanation as to why, but I would say that every year is really the same. So, I mean, I don't know, man, it, it, it's not like disappointingly slow. Like I'm not going to shit on these guys and act like everything's so weak and crap, like trash. But I mean, you know, there's just there's nobody that's set that bar so crazy because usually when one domino falls, like the rest of them fall, right? And nobody's put out that outlying time yet to make like you know Fred drops his nine seventy nine, and now Noah's like, oh shit, Coleman's like, oh you know, so maybe that's got something to do with it too. But I, you know, that's still been a great year with a lot of uh, a lot of excitement. Still, I'll take it. Yeah, I want to on the other side where people are like, oh, this is disappointing. It's a disappointing year. People running slow. I honestly feel the exact opposite a little bit of it because we've seen a lot on Twitter, people talking about, yo, get rid of the people getting uh, Anson. Uh, if you're listening to this, Anson, he wants to get rid of the clock and track and field as a whole, which I think is an absolutely stupid thing to talk about. Uh, you have to have a clock and track and field, but he claims to, to get rid of it. The, the reason, and I, I like the reason that he says that it's that he wants it to be to focus on the competition. So it's like, hey, we don't have a clock because everyone's eyes, it's not who won, who lost. It's what time did they run? That's what people are his. And so he's like, he wants to get rid of that and get it so more people are focusing in on the competition, which I get that. And I, I like that idea. I think getting rid of the clock is an absolutely idiotic thing to do. You wouldn't get rid of a basketball. You wouldn't get rid of the scoreboard in a basketball game uh, and just say who's winning, who's losing. You wouldn't do that. But I like the present, the, the idea of it. And so. Right now, like you, can, no one can confidently tell me who's winning that men's 100 at the Olympics. If anyone tries to tell you, oh, yeah, this person looks the best right now, like they're easily going to win. Whoever tells you that, they're lying to your face. Every there's, there's so many people that can win because we're all super close right now. And so that's what I'm loving about this year, where it's like, sure, it, has anyone ran a 9 7 or 9 8? No, but everyone is like within a couple hundredths of a second. So you have no idea what's going to happen at the U S trials or what's going to happen at the Olympics. Like, so that's where I'm liking it right now, where everyone's at what seems to be the same point in their training cycle. Cause you're all running around the same time. So that's going to make it for even more parody when we get to the big stage, you know, definitely, bro. I couldn't have said it better. You said it everywhere too. There's a lot of parody in the sport right now, which is dope. Yeah, so looking yeah. forward to seeing how it's going to play out. And yeah, I mean, season's best for for Coleman and and a big win. Uh, so so that's going to be going to be good for him. So we'll have to see how that's going how that's going to play out and everything, man. But it's a good one. It's a good one. Uh, let's go on over. We're going to put on our distance running caps a little bit. Uh, so I know we ain't we don't talk distance too much, but you can't you can't miss out on this Josh Kerr Jakob Ingerbritsen finally going head to head uh when it comes to the mile Josh Kerr getting the win uh with a time of 345 34 uh 3 minutes 45 seconds 0.34 milliseconds Jakob Ingerbritsen with a 345 60 then Jared Nagus coming in third place with a 346 22. So everyone separated by less than one second. Um, what were what's your thoughts on this rate? That was a big one. Uh, I think this is a big win for Josh. What's your what's your thoughts here? Big dog, man. Big dog, Josh Kerr. For real. You know, I feel him. Um, I thought it was a patient ass race, too, you know, because he wasn't leading from the jump. So he he really showed a lot of patience and confidence in himself. And in the interview, I liked after he, he, he the interview was like, why you take off your shades? He was like, yeah, I just wanted to show everybody that I still have got more I could I could do. I'm like, oh, yeah. OK. OK. Yeah, I feel it. OK. Yo, 
Did you see the uh the Instagram post that he put up yesterday too? Nah. He put the uh with the Kendrick song, like motherfuck the big three. Man. It's just oh. yeah. <laughs> he put that up. Oh, he took so, man, yeah, let me let me let me bring this up. Let me show the uh the picture that, that Josh selected too. Yo, it was cold. It was He's cold for that. Yeah. So anyone that's watching, you'll be able to see if you're not watching, maybe not. But this was the pic. So we put that picture of him just like clearly ahead of Jakob. And then the song behind it is like, yo, yeah. It's just yeah, big. Yeah, I like it I though. Like, All right, Josh. All right, Josh. So yo, for those that don't know the um well, first look, you you familiar with the the beef and everything that they got going on? No, oh yeah. You want to give a you want to start off with a little bit of what what you know, and then I'll I'll add of the stuff that I got for those that aren't familiar with the beef between Josh Kerr and Jakob Britson. What what's going I on? Like, I feel like it started with Jakob when he said a he said something. He was like, I could beat these dudes and sleep blindfolded. <laughs> yeah, it started off at the um. I think if. If you go to Sidious Mag, they have a whole timeline of every, like, the entire beef. Like, you know how they, they'd be like, hey, this is where it started. This is what's going on. So I might butcher it a little bit because I don't have that in front of me. But, yeah, it started off with Jakob. It was after um, the World Championships this this okay. past year when he won, when Josh won. Because before Josh won, Jakob was, like, 11-0 and 0 against Dude. Like, yeah. he was just dominating Josh. And then Jakob won, or sorry, Josh won. And uh, Jakob was not feeling that. He's like, yeah, like, you know, he he got a race. It's not a big deal. You know, I can beat these, I can beat these guys, these cats blindfolded. He also said he could beat them. He could beat them running backwards. Uh, he And then uh, my favorite line was when he was running with Yair Nagus, uh, when Yair Nagus broke the American record in the 15. He said, Jared, just run. If you run with me, you're going to break. Like, I can pace you to break this American record. He's like, just stay with me. And I'll, he's like, damn, you're going to big dog me like that. You're going to say, he said, yeah, just stick behind me and I'll, you're going to break a record if you just, if you st just stick on me. And so, yeah, they don't mess with each other, man. Like, if you, if you go to some of these uh, press conferences, do you see any of the, the press conferences and interviews and stuff like that? Mm -mm. I just saw the post race. Oh, bro. It was uh, there's this one interview. I think I can't remember if it was from flow flow track or let's run or whatever it was. But uh, there was one right after and they're asking Jakob uh, before the um, before the race. He's like, he's like, do you not like uh, Josh Kerr? And he sits there for like what feels like an eternity, just thinking about like how to answer this. He's like. You know. We're like competitors. We we go up against each other and like we we, we want to beat it. So you don't they don't like each other, man. Like it's uh it's that's 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 interesting to see. You don't see that too much in track. You feel that elevates the race, like this makes it even better when they when they line up. Absolutely. And especially in a race like like the 15, because it's gonna be room for like a little bit of a little bit of that, you know, a little bit of the elbow, a little bit of the shoulder. It's gonna get probably a little chippy. And these dudes more than likely they're going to do something really special this year. So I want this beef to keep cooking, you know, so then at the end we're going to get some food. We're going to be able to eat off it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm right there with you, man. That was, that was yeah. great. With it, who would you say in your entire track career was your biggest rival? Here, I'll start off. I'll share with you who my biggest rival was. Uh, so mine, Gurjeet <laughs> Rye, high school pole vault. Uh, shout out Gurjeet. So we were the only two, like, actually we're the only two good pole vaulters in our in in high school like everyone else in our conference was not good and so it was just like i'm going he's going we're just always going up against each other and um and so it was uh like we we didn't like hate each other it was just like yo i always gotta look after you you gotta look after me because like we're the two best ones and um i got really pissed because um he thought i was ducking for a race, but here, let me, now we, let me share with you how I wasn't ducking here, Gurji. I promise you, I wanted to compete. So there was a, it was our dual meet. It was us versus them, Strathaven versus Marple Newtown, right? And so we're going up against each other. Uh, and we, this is like the last dual meet before uh, our conference, our 
yeah, our league championship. And they had a uh, they brought out the news crew to like cover us going up against each other. Like they had a whole cameraman, uh, a whole like written assignment. They're doing all this stuff. And um, so it's supposed to be us going up against each other for, for the pole vault. And they never have these news crews for, for any of the other things. And uh, it was raining that day. And my coach, like at the last second, like I brought my poles, I brought everything. And he's like, Colin, you're not vaulting today. I'm like, what do you mean I'm not vaulting today? He's like, yeah, like we have enough other like vaulters on our team where, yeah, you're not going to win and you can get 10, 10 points for winning, but – Hey, we're going to get like six points for coming in like third, second, third and fourth or whatever. You know, we're going to get a bunch of points. So we don't need you that. We need you to run the the to do triple jump because you can only do four events in high school. We need you to do triple jump, long jump, four by one, 100 or whatever. Uh, you need to do all them. And so I was like, coach, if I do that, they're going to think I'm ducking the competition. And I don't want to do that. Like you have the, the news crew right here. You're going to make me not compete. They're like. Colin, that's what we need you to do. And I was like, bro, please don't pull me out of this race. I'm going to look like an idiot. And uh, he's like, nope, that's what we're doing. So pulled me out of the pole vault. Uh, he gets a huge win. Uh, gets a whole article like, yeah, Gurjeet wins. Colin didn't end up competing. And I'm like, coach, like you're making me look like an idiot, bro. But uh, yeah, shout out Gurjeet Rai. He was my my biggest rival back uh, back in the day, man. Yeah, bro. Coach was hating. I mean, I get it, but like, damn. Get annoying. this competition off, Coach. Yeah, you got the whole news crew coming on out and got me looking, got me going out sad, bro. What about you? You have any uh any rivals growing up? Um, college high school? Pro? Everybody's my rival, bro. I'm not gonna lie. When you asked the question, I started laughing because I saw so many faces. Everybody's my rival, but I'll say my biggest rival, a person that pushed me the most, had to be Terrence Laird. Yeah. And he not even, that's my homie, but like, you know what I'm saying? Training with him, I'm like, nah, bro. I ain't going. You know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't going like that. Nah. You were in 198. All right, that I'm in 197 then. You mm -hmm. know? Like, just one of those kind of things. So, probably Terrence. Shout out Terrence. Shout out Terrence, man. No, I see that. Yeah. I see that. So, no, yeah, that 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 race, that's that's a good one with, with Josh and Jakob. Excited to see how that's going to, like, culminate with the Olympics. And just, like, the the stuff on social media continues. Like, man, if I was at that next race, I'd be like, yo, so you had the – it's not big three. It's just big me. Can you tell me a little bit more about why it's just big me, Josh? Like, so, yo, that's that's cool. That's cool. Uh, that's pretty – any other – uh? Competitions or things that you notice at oh uh, Grant Holloway uh, for for pre and then we'll get into um, a little bit of the college stuff. So Grant Holloway with another world lead with a time of what was it thirteen point oh three to get the win. Uh, pretty big, pretty big season's best for him. Uh, what did you notice out of that race? I know I was talking to him a little bit after we were, we were going over some some things. But anything that you noticed uh, in that that race from uh, from Grant here? Yeah, Grant, he jumped out like he normally would. You know, he, like, jumped on this competition quite literally. That's how it looks like he gets out of the box. Um, I mean, it looked good. It was a normal Grant win. He got, like, pretty stagnant from 8 to 10. Mm -hmm. And uh, it looked like guys maybe started closing a gap. But, like, I, he wins every time he steps on the track, it feels like, you know. So, um, but it was dope. And I saw he, like, drank, like, on the track. <laughs> After it caused up a little bit of commotion, but like, you know, I'm all about that. Like, have some fun with it, you know, too. And that's kind of been his character. He's been like a big wine guy on Twitter and stuff. I actually got to talk up with him. I've got some stuff that he might appreciate. But, um, yeah, no, it was dope. I, I love Grant's character, man. He, he has a lot of fun with the sport. So I'm a big, big fan. Yeah, Grant's awesome, man. Uh, yeah, I was, uh, I was watching that race and we were going over a little bit. And, yeah, the – the area that I think for him or that was interesting, like you mentioned, eight to eight to ten or eight to nine, those are the the hurdles that it's like he almost is too fast for the hurdles. Like it looks like on them last two, he's kind of he's getting up really close and he has to chop it up a second. And it's like he would almost do better if they were like, hey, push this hurdle back a foot so I can get a little bit of more space. Like he's got he's got so much speed, so much power. His legs are so long that it looks like in those last few hurdles, like he goes up on it. Now, that is from a guy who has 
ran one 300 meter hurdle race back in high school. So, you know, game is game. And I'm clearly a big, I, I know my hurdles, obviously. No, nah, I'm joking. I don't know Jack Diddley. He might, this might be a completely wrong take, but that's what it looks like to me. Like he's kind of yeah. running up on it because he's so dang fast. And uh, yeah, when we were, we were ch chopping it up a little bit after, after his race, he was like, yeah, like I, I really want to clean up that last, uh, that last little bit. Um, you know, well, he didn't say it like that. He, he was more saying it like, yo, I got to, that should have been a faster race. He's like, y'all take it 1303, but you know, we, we got some area to, to improve there. So um, I think that'll be good. One area, one thing though, Jamaica, I, I was talking about earlier with Jamaica. We had a uh, Hansel. What was it? Hansel parchment. Where, mm -hmm. where what was the time he ran a 1328 came in fourth Olympic champion. Didn't look extremely hot there. Nervous at all about Hansel? I mean, thirteen twenty eight, not not too great. I don't know. What's your what's your thought? Hansel's not going to win this year. Ooh, just flat out, huh? No, he's not going to win. Uh, I thought I don't want to say the twenty one win was a fluke, but like that Olympic championship, was, it took me by surprise for sure, and I wasn't I wasn't alone on that. And since then, Grant hasn't. I'm not sure he's beaten Grant since. I could be I could be wrong, but I think that's something to look into. How many times he's beaten Grant since that happened? Know. <laughs> um, I know Grant has definitely had the the the, the majority of those shares, um, and I think at this point in their careers, Grant's just better. Let's take a look. And I think so, Danny Roberts might just be better too. I would I would agree. I think yeah. Danny Roberts is he's he's I gotta. Because we've seen him be very consistent, but there's also been a couple times where I mean he's gone, he's fallen over some hurdles. He's had some difficulty hitting some hurdles at during some of these bigger races. So it's like I just gotta if he if he's clean, if he has a clean hurdle series, yeah, there's no chance. Like I think yeah. Daniel Roberts is right there. So yeah, so here here we go. Um, so since the Olympics, the Hansel Parchment and Grant Holloway raced in the 110 meter hurdles. They raced one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten times. Grant Holloway is uh, eight and two. The only time that he won. So, so Hansel won at pre last year. Um, but also uh, in that race, <laughs> the post race, uh, if you go, I was, we were watching these uh, during the magic boost with Grant Holloway's interview. He was just like, yeah, you know, there's just some things. We just got to finish out the season. He clearly just was like, this is a contractual thing. I got to be here. I'm running here. I, I won the world championships. Like I hate track meets that are after the world championships anyway. I think it's, I think it's stupid. I think you should have the world championships as the last meet of the year. That's neither here nor there. We'll talk about that later on, but uh, he beat him there. And then he beat him in the, uh, the diamond league meet, you know, back in 2023. So yeah, he's just been Grant's just dominating. Uh, and then obviously he's beaten him in every 60 because Grant hasn't lost the 60 meter hurdles since high school. Um, so yeah, no, he, he had that great, the Olympics, but then since then not, Nothing really to to look back at. Yeah, I'm super excited for the one ten hurdles. Though I got a dark horse. I'm not gonna say it yet. I got to say it in, in 21 days. <laughs> in 21 days. <laughs> 21 days. He's mapping it out. Yeah, 21 but days. I got, a dark dark. Horse. I got a dark horse. He knows who's. He knows who he is. So that's all that matters. All right. All right. There we go. I'll, I'll we'll do some guesses. I'll have to guess work. See who that's gonna be. We got to um, build 21 days of suspense. Yeah. Good. 21 days. All right. You yeah. hear that here? Lock in. 21 days, figure out who that's going to be. Love that, yeah. man. Uh, awesome. So that was the the pre. Any other stuff that you noticed in, in pre before we hit up some of these uh, the college stuff that we that we went over? Um, I mean, we talk about Kenny? Ooh, Kung Fu Kenny. Yeah, yeah. let's get into that. Uh, why don't you start us off then? Shoot, man. Kenny's doing his thing right now, bro. Kenny's in his bag. He's having fun. Um He's having fun, and 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 I think he's the the commentator said it well. Like he's probably in the best form he's been in in his career, or he's showing the best uh, fitness and, and and consistency that he's old, that he's shown over his career. So um, it was dope to watch him get a dub. Uh, it seems like a happy happy kind of energy that I'm getting from him watching the interviews and and listening to him. Uh, seems like he's in a really good place. So Courtney Lindsay did this thing too, by the way. That was really good by Courtney. Yeah. First, got got going Courtney Lindsay thing right here. 
uh, in the post race interview, T from Real Talk with T said, "What is something a fun fact that the people should know about you, um, Courtney?" And he said, uh, "I can fight." And I was like, <laughs> "Like hey, got that Black Air Force One energy, <laughs> he's trying to be Marvin man. Gracie with it." He's like, "Yeah, I can, I can fight, bro. So don't, don't mess with, uh, don't mess with Courtney." Um, but yeah, so Kenny Benaric. Big uh, big win for him, man. I mean, 1989, and it was cold out there. It was like 60 degrees, um, you know, during during this race. So, um, could you give some ins- like, do you think that how much does that weather affect you as a sprinter? Like, does that really change much? Like, yo, know, you're it's going to be slower versus, and then what's the ideal temperature? You know, when when you're sprinting, what's the for me the for 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 me the ideal temperature is going to be like 85, 80, 85. But uh, when it's cold like that, and especially with these higher tier meets, you're going to be sitting for longer, standing for longer, waiting for longer. Um, and it just it, it might not actually affect you, your actual performance. But mentally, it's like, oh, damn, my muscle feels kind of stiff. My feet feel cold, like the track feels hard. So it's definitely more mental obstacles. Um, and times typically do reflect it. You know, I don't think you can't. There's no saying you can't run fast in the cold like that. But, you know. So I think, you know, t- times have shown us and they're never going to be as fast. Yeah, he's uh, that was that was big for him, man, like undefeated right now, too. And uh, he sent I mean, we did the interview. So if you want to listen to the the previous podcast, we talk all about this Um, in what would we'll drop this on on Sunday. But he's like, yeah, he sent out a message. He like he feels I feel, you know, with the world lead with that nine six. Uh, and then, you know, you back it up with another win here where it's colder. So you're not going to run those crazy times, but it's still, you know, a big win. And then uh, now it's going to be I'm looking forward to seeing how Noah's going to respond, because we talked about how uh, Rye responded to Allison DeSantos in the 400 hurdles in the beginning of the year. And uh, Noah set this up where he's like, yo, I'm going to get that world lead back on June 8th, June 8th. I'm looking forward to seeing what's going to be. Hopefully we going to be. We we gonna be there, be able to see it in in person. We'll we'll talk about that later. But uh, yeah, that's gonna be a a big a big kind of what is Noah gonna respond and how is this gonna look like? Because those two, I think, is the that's the biggest that's the storyline that I'm most looking forward to. Noah versus Kenny of who's gonna get this win? Um, you know, between the two of them, like that's the one that I'm looking most forward to personally. Yeah, bro, it's gonna be lit. It's gonna be lit for sure. Awesome. So uh, huge win. Looking forward to it. Now let's go on over to some of these uh, these college kids, these prelims. I want to first start it with you. What are the what's the nerves? What's what's the vibe like at a college prelim? How do you how are you feeling at the these competitions here, man? Listen, I don't know if everybody feels this way, but I'm gonna keep it all the way 100 with you right now. OK, this is for real. That meat prelim meet or the quarterfinal meet with, you know, regional meet, whatever you want to call it. That's the easiest meet of the entire year. That meet is the easiest meet of the whole year. Like we out there on vacation. We out there. Cause if you look at the way that it's structured to, you can't let 12 people beat you. It's no way I'm going to this meet and 12 people are beating me. It's the easiest meet. All right, bet. Cool. I just got to finish top 12. I could do that. I'm a little sick. Oh, I don't feel the training. I could get top 12. So everybody got different expectations of themselves. And I understand that, right? But if you're really looking at that meet, it should be looked at as the easiest meet of the year. We there for vacation. We go for a whole week. Typically, it's in Jacksonville, Florida. This year was in Kentucky and Arkansas, I know. But that's the easiest meet, man. That's my mindset about it. That's how I feel about it, bro. How you feel about it, man? Oh, see, I ain't good enough to get there. So, 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 but that's interesting because that's actually a little opposite of what I've heard from some other people uh, talk about. I've heard a lot of people saying like, this is the most nerve wracking meet that you're going to be at because it's like, it's the, if you, you got to perform at this meet, if you don't do that, do it here, you gone, like you out of here, like, Yo, you've got to to do it now. Yeah, I think you know if you you, know, you can't let twelve people you know <laughs> letting twelve people beat you for sure. But like, hey, we saw. You know, did you see Aaron Brown 
his placement. Yeah, he he's a hey, bro. All that shit talking. Hey, all that shit talking, man. I see it. <laughs> the first man out in the 100, the 200, and the four by one. First man out. Crazy. Crazy. Like Crazy. that, that's just why, like that, that's so unlucky. First man out on all of them by 0.01. I would be, I'd be pissed. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> I'd be, I'd be so pissed. But that's interesting. Yeah, because I, I I would hear a lot of people of like, yo, the first is a survive in advance, you know, survive in advance, you get all this. But okay, uh, do you feel like when some a lot of other people had a similar type of mindset, or maybe I was no. just talking to the, to the wrong people when it comes to uh, you know, those that were nervous about. It. I actually, you know what, I have met a couple of people. Like once I say that, people be like, shit, you right. But my coach, Coach Benny, man, shout out my coach Benny. That's my dog forever. But he the first person to tell me that. And because it was like a couple weeks before the meet. And I'm like, damn, bro. Because I might have been more leaning on the side that you said. And he's like, bro, this is the easiest meet of the year. You just can't let 12 people beat you. And then he said that to me. I'm like, man, we out here on vacation, bro. I ain't losing to 12 people. Yeah, one of the last time uh, I came in 12. Yeah, you probably can't think of a whole lot of times. Last time you came in 12th place in a in a track meet. So it's like, yeah, I, not today's not going to be that day. No. <laughs> where, and I, bro, I remember... I remember we were standing there at the regional meet and we were staying there like the same time WWE happened to be in the city and they were staying in the same hotel as us. So like it was like Chris Jericho and like Vicky Guerrero and all of them. I was on the hotel and I'm like, yo, what the heck? <laughs> yo, that's nutty. Imagine you, you, you're about to get ready for a 100. You see John Cena coming through. <laughs> yeah. You're like, yo, bro, you running the like, yeah, man, I'm running this 100 real quick. Let me, let me, let me get this. Uh, that that's nuts, man. That's nuts. Yeah. But, that's cool. That's cool. So we had prelims. Uh want to start off the the biggest race, the one that I saw that was most interesting to me on the west side, uh, west prelims. We had uh Louis Hinchcliffe coming out with what was a, a 9.84, little windy, and then Sean Maswin Gagne uh of also Houston with a 9.89, um 2.5 wind, just a little bit, a little too much. Like that's a that you got to he's got to be feeling pretty good, you know, transfer in from Washington State coming into Houston, talk to them at Penn Relays. I mean, I'm feeling like the I don't know if I got Louis to we'll talk about our prelims later. I don't know if Louis winning it. I think Sean's like Sean, you know, is definitely one of those people I could I could see he's he's in that conversation. But you got to be feeling phenomenal after running a 984, even if it is a little windy, I feel. Absolutely, man. Shout out to the guy, man. Shout out to the guy, Louie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that was, that, was, that was good for him. And so, I mean, it, can you feel the difference when you're an athlete of like, you know, oh, this is going to be wind aided, like, damn. Like that 2.5, does it feel like that much of a difference? Like, yeah. I feel like it. I don't know. I, yeah. Can, can you feel it? Anything under a 3.5. Like, in my opinion, it feels like, oh, like it was that, that was probably legal. Like anything under a three five, I, I, I kind of personally have felt that way. Um, on the opposite end, most of the time I am running a 400, so I'm going to feel it both ways regardless. Yeah, yeah. But um, but in the times where I have ran 200, it's like, oh, like oh, that was 3.3. No way. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I think everything's like really marginal until you get to those higher numbers. OK, yeah, I was yeah. going to say, like, damn, that, that's got to stink. Like when you come through, you see the time, you're like, oh, yeah, I got the world lead. I got a you know, I'm the I'm the baddest man in college. And then it's like, yes, yeah, when it's a little bit too much, be like, damn, bro, that's got to that's got to suck. That's got to suck. Yeah. But yeah. Um, what are some things, uh, some other races you you were looking at, uh, some things you saw from the from the prelim, man? Man, I, I'm going to I'm going to speak on it. I really am excited about what Jaden Mays has been doing this year. Jaden Mays has been killing, but I think that it's still, like under the radar. Like, I don't know. Jaden's been killing in the indoor season. She was killing all outdoor. She's been killing one pack 12. I think she got athlete of the meet. Mm -hmm. Killing right now. So um, I'm excited for this, the way that things are shaping up. And like, usually, you know, Oregon is the more low key team because it's so like far away and stuff. Mm -hmm. But, uh, I'm excited to see what she can do when, you know, she's in the race with those other, with those SECs and those, those, those big dogs over there. But mm -hmm. I, I was definitely impressed by, by Jaden Mays. That was one of the first athletes that came to mind. Yeah, man. Look, I ain't really peep. I wasn't peep game on Jay Mays for a little while. I'll be honest. I, I wasn't 
seeing her too much. Sleepers, man. I was I was sleeping, and now I've seen it. Like she has gotten better every single like look every single race. So she ran eleven twenty eight, then eleven nineteen, then eleven seventeen, then eleven oh one, and then now a ten eighty three. One, two, three, four, five straight races of improvement in a row. That is like as a coach, as an athlete, it doesn't get much more. This is what we're going for than that of you're getting better. Literally every single race that you're going up against. Oh, yeah. And then at at prelims when or not prelims, sorry, after packs where she won and she hit the she hit the, the the Jordan shrug. He's like, that's back to back. I was like, oh yeah, nah, she's she's cooking. Like this this gonna be cool. She's cooking. Like can, like I, I see her mannerisms and like the shit she's doing after the race. I'm like, that's a confident athlete right now. And those are the type of athletes I kind of look to when it comes time, like for you know, headed to Oregon, headed to the championships. Like, oh, they got a little extra swagger. They gonna you know beat out two two extra people just off of that. So. Jada Mays, you heard it here first. There you go. We'll get into, I'm sure, with our, our prelim. That's probably a, a preview of the a preview of yeah. our preview that, that we got going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, so would you would you rather come into that rate, come into a championship like with a lot of confidence, or would you rather come into it with like the best time in the country? So it's like, hey, maybe you ran the best time in the country early on in the year. Uh, or would you rather go into it? Where you've got like, hey, you, you're coming off of maybe a, a big race at the prelim, like like her, where you know she's she's coming in with a lot of uh, comp. How, how would you, which would you prefer? I would choose the latter of the two. I would definitely choose the every time I'm progressing, right? Because I don't want to set a big time and then like if I run 100, I don't want to run 988 and then run like 1006 four times in a row. They're like damn, like uh, yeah, I haven't felt this in a while. You know, but if I'm steady progressing, I'll just feel way better, you know, but heading into the into that big meet. Mm-hmm. And then uh we got to get into your territory, man. Arkansas women, 315, right? 321. 320, yeah, yeah, not 315. That'd be crazy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, was, I was like, nah, I'm tripping. I'm tripping. Yeah, what, what was it? Uh three. Yeah, yeah. They why isn't it pulling up? Oh no. Uh, where's Arkansas, man? Why is the, oh, am I looking on the, oh, I'm looking on the wrong prelim. I'm looking on the wrong prelim. That's why, uh, they ran it. It was a national record, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ski. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 321 92 with, yeah. uh, Rosie, Nikisha, uh, Kaylin and Amber. What's what tell me you're, you're the 400 meter guy. Uh, that's, how, how big is that, that 321? They beat the competition by seven seconds, by the way. Yeah, it was ridiculous, especially their second and fourth legs. Um, I think it was Nikisha on second leg and Amber on anchor. Yeah. Like, the aggression that those two ran with, especially, like, their first 250 meters was, like, holy shit, dude. And, like, they were in front of everybody. So, you know, it's sometimes hard to tell, but, like, they were just pushing. And like, I saw it like such an aggression for them. And um, with a program that heavy and that stacked and that good, they knew that they were going to go through to the championship, but for them to still be that like aggressive and that locked in for the meet um, is a testament to those girls, obviously. And coach Johnson, coach Johnson has probably done the most on the women's 400 side out of any collegiate program uh, of recent history. Um, He's just consistently putting out dogs, you know what I'm saying? And, And relay killers. Uh, so yeah, that's that was my take from it. And it's interesting that all these girls are like five ten, five nine, foot and shit. Like, bro, but that's what you that's what you got to do. You just got to have like just giant people that are running. I mean, like that that plays a thing. I mean, because you're now as a collective, if you're all five ten, you you put a full a full race together. If everyone's run like taking like five less strides than everyone else over the course of a hundred. Uh, 400 meters like because your strides are just wider you got four if you're taking 20 less strides as an entire relay and you and you already faster than people like that's less like that's how you gonna catch up how you yeah, gonna catch tough. up man like, it's a tough call yeah no that's that's big for them so uh they, their team's so 
so deep. Like they've got even more people. Like they could put their B team out there. I feel four new, completely p- different people, and they could probably still, you know, win a national championship. Almost like they at least make it to at least make, they like they genuinely could put a B team together that would make it to the national championships, and that's ridiculous. Like that's crazy. Mm-hmm. Nutty man, that's just nutty. Um, I think we also saw we got to go back to your before we close this out. Your LSU guys, I think they put up a, a college lead in the four by one. Was that right? Uh, they could, I think they previously had the college oh, was that, lead. Uh, was that already okay. Yeah, I, I think they previously hard. had it. They didn't run too pretty there. Okay. Godson had to, Godson had some work to do there to finish. I could, but the way that the camera was like you couldn't see. Um, but I mean, they made it through, and I'm telling you, like. LSU men are typically not going to do like the best at that meet because I feel like we all have the mindset of like, bro, like top 12 people ain't beating me. <laughs> top 12. You know, so um, yeah, I think it's, yeah, I think it's even still 12 for the relay team. So um, yeah, they'll, they'll be fine. Bet that, bet that. Uh, any other things we want, you wanted? Uh, oh, wait, I forgot my story from the track. We got to go through uh, for my men, my 400 that, that I had to run. You have any other uh, before we get into the some stories? You have any uh, other performances you noticed? Wanted to wanted to shout out. Let me see, because I don't want to leave. There was a lot of really, really great performances. I don't want to I don't want to just not not mention anything. Um. I mean, shoot, I guess I guess I covered – let me look at my notes. Man, I'm looking over there. I should look at my notes. No, nah, I, I covered – we talked about who I wanted to talk about, so. But, yeah. yeah. A lot of good stuff, and, yeah, next week going to be an exciting one. But let me get into this 400, man. So, look, look, so – Media 400. I got my bib and everything. We did this thing. Uh, so for those that are not sure what went down, let me let me get let me let me give you game. So I'll give you the exact breakdown of what happened. So uh, this is the day before the meet. So Friday, uh, eight o'clock. That's when we had to check in. So it's like, all right, warm up, do all this stuff beforehand before we even get to the race. Uh, so my goal was I wanted to I wanted to run a 59. That was my goal. My my nephew, I told that he ran a 59 at his state championship. I was like, I need to beat him. I can't I can't get rolled by my nephew. That was my goal. Uh, And keep in mind, I haven't ran a 400. I haven't sprinted in five years. I have not done a single lick of training in five years. Pretty much. I've like done some lifting and I ran during like covid, but essentially did nothing. In five years. So I am completely like just this is it's just pure athlete. So if you want to talk about just like how are you as just a pure athlete, this is like my baseline because I haven't done any training. So my baseline was where this was. And so uh I knew I was shocked during this warm-up. So for those that don't know, the the actual like the concourse of Hayward Field is made of track. So like you can actually like put spikes on. They got a hill. They got a whole thing. They got lanes on there on the concourse. And so uh, I'm going to do the warm up. Then I'm running up. There's like this little hill and going up around. I was tired after about 150 meters running that. I'm like, damn, I am not running 59, bro. <laughs> I was like, I was, I was like, oh man, this is already getting me. Like this, this ain't gonna go well. So i'm in that warm-up i'm just like now i'm just delaying the inevitable i'm like i know this is going to be chalk i know i'm not going i'm not going to do good but i'm like no nah, i gotta i gotta i gotta still lock in i gotta still lock in so we get in there i'm in heat two i'm with uh another magic booster named olu who's uh he was actually uh an olympian in 2016 he did the trip he did the triple jump and so i was like bro I want to, if I can beat this dude, the clout that I can say of, I just beaten an Olympian in a four, in a 400. Ooh, bro. That would have been, I was like, that would have been cold. That would be my best fun fact of all time. He was also wearing a vest, like uh, a weighted vest doing this. So I was like, this is my best chance at beating him. Uh, But then we get on the line. I I try to follow your four P's, man. What was it? Push, pace, uh, push, pace. I remember four, a four press. Was tray. What? Press. Pressed. Yes. I tried. I pushed. I tell you that. 
I pushed. And then I was like, I got off the hundred. I was like, all right, here comes that second one. I'm just going to pace. I'm going, I'm cooling. I'm right here. But while I'm in the race, like I was, I started like getting a little tired at the 150 mark. I heard Olu, who was the Olympian. He said, oh, I'm chilling right now. I was like, damn, I am definitely not chilling right now. So then he, he started pulling up and, and uh, I was like, crap, I got to lock in. Uh, I get on that back curve. Uh, my legs start getting heavy. Like I'm on that hundred. I felt like I had 30 pounds of bricks on my legs. I couldn't yeah. move. I'm just like trying. I'm like about to die. It is brutal coming through. Uh, ended up getting third in my heat, uh, ran a one Oh two, uh, which I was like, damn, if I had trained just a little bit more or changed just a little bit, I would have broken that 59 and it was in front of Michael Johnson too. I felt like a loser, man. I'm, I'm running one Oh two in front of the goat. Uh, didn't go how I wanted it to go, but, uh, it was all, it was all good. It was all good now. And then I was saying before we started this podcast, I got a whole nother level of respect for y'all athletes because I finished this race and, uh, my friends would like try to talk to me like right after, like they were in the first seat. I was in the second heat and they're like, yo bro, how'd it feel? Like how'd it go? And I'm just like, shut up. Stop talking to me. I'm dying here. Do you not see me fighting for my life on this track? Like I'm just like, breathing so heavy and people trying to talk to me and so i was like damn wait a minute i'd be doing this to y'all like y'all be finishing a 400 and i'm just like all right tell me exactly how you thought i was like dang i feel like a whole asshole now man so <laughs> i gotta apologize to all y'all athletes for i didn't realize what i was putting y'all through right after the race i was feeling like death and then now i'm putting a whole microphone in front of your face asking you to tell me what was going on during the back stretch you know of your 400 like you remember that shit exactly <laughs> Just, yeah, I was, uh, so great experience. I'm rolled, unfortunately, but uh, it was uh, that was that was cool, man. So it was it was a good race. Yeah, man. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it, though. That's cool stuff. That was funny. That was a funny story, man. So you ain't gonna forget it. But you gotta you gotta double back next year, though. Oh yeah, I gotta get my get back. Uh, so yeah, I'm yeah. gonna be train, training uh, phase 59. No super spikes. So you know, I'm I'm all natural. You know, I'm, I'm all that, you know, I was, I was, I was doing good. I was doing good, but all right, man, you got any, uh, any interesting stories? Close this out. Oh, what's funny. So you spoke about like your friends trying to talk to you after a race. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I remember last year in Boston at the Grand Prix, you interviewed me after the race and like, I was <laughs> like slurring, like I was like slurring. It was something like goofy I was doing, but yeah. I, yeah. No, yes. you I remember that. Like, the, of the, of the ball there. Yeah, it was right after. Yeah, because you got a you got a big win. You got your get back. That's what it was. Yeah, I got my get back. Yeah, I got my get back that day, and you were there to uh, interview me after. I was pretty gassed, but it was still it was a good it was a good one. Though. I remember that. There you go. Awesome, yeah. man. Well, thank you guys for listening to another episode of the Track World News podcast. As we mentioned throughout here, next week the NCAA preview show. We're going to be going over all things NCAA. I guess we know who Noah's going to be picking until we win in these dang meets. Uh, but get ready for that. We're going to cover every single event in the NCAA championship. I'm sure that you're going to want to hear all of that stuff. So do not miss out. Uh, Noah, any uh, words for the people before we sign off here? Man, stay cool. Stay blessed. Thanks again for watching. You know, I'm excited to do this preview next week. Go Tigers, baby. There we go. All right. Thank you, guys. Have a good one. Peace. Peace.